Hi, everybody. We have come to the end of day one of our inaugural ADV Healthy Oceans Tech and Finance Forum. My name is Anna Posa, and I am your MC. What a day! On behalf of the organizing team, I'd like to extend our gratitude to our partners, speakers, and participants who joined us today. It's been such an inspiring day listening to different discussions and ideas on how we can support healthy oceans. I'm here with Ching Feng Zhang. He is the chief of the Rural Development and Food Security Thematic Group, and he is also the OIC of the Environment Thematic Group at ADB. Ching Feng has been instrumental in organizing this event. Hi, Ching Feng. How are you? What are your key takeaways for today? Thank you so much. And I enjoy so much about the discussions today. I agree with you. Today is a great start of the Ocean Health Forum. It is the first ocean forum, as you know, the IDB hosted since we started the ocean program in 2019. I can say so strong passions and also many inspirational initiatives coming from uh, our speakers, partners, and also mm -hmm. audiences. Uh, with this, I have the four take uh, from the uh, I hearing from the, uh, today's discussions. First, uh, ocean health program is very critical for MDBs to achieve their CAM ambitions. Uh, and the uh, uh, COP26, as you heard, uh, President Massa sang a, a statement on nature with the heads of the other eight MDBs. And in the signing ceremony, President Massa stated that together with the regional flyway initiative that we launched and the COP15 in Kuei Ocean Health Program is an essential part of the ADB mm. achieving its uh, climate ambition by the 2030. Mm -hmm. Second, ocean health and the blue economy is closely, closely related. As you heard from today, uh, ADB's Vice President Bang Bang Susantoro mm -hmm. emphasizes the region's high reliance on the uh, ocean economy. It is extremely important for us to take uh, collective action to, to protect uh, our coastal and the marine ecosystem. And also as a institu uh, international uh, financial institutions, ADB needs to catalyze innovative mm -hmm. uh, ocean finance. The third, this year is very, very important for us. We need to grab this as a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. As you heard from the uh, uh, Mr. Peter Thompson, the UN Secretary General's Special Ambassador, for the ocean today, uh, he say in the opening session, we should claim the year 2022 as a year when we turn the tide on how we treat our oceans. Uh, we need to direct the finance to the technologies and the innovations that are very critical for us to deliver on our commitments. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we need to ski up our uh, investment in the blue food systems. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you must have heard from the, our uh, keynote speaker, Dr. Sukataro uh, Susert, and also Jim the Lip, uh, mm -hmm. highlight the uh, critical enterprise of uh, food security, nutrition, care, environment, and the development systems. And also the Asia is a very, very critical role for the seafood production. So again, uh, from the, uh, these two engaging panels, we really need to scale up our investment on sustainable uh, agriculture and also seafood system, which will benefit both uh, our human and also ocean, uh, ocean health. I just, let me just pause here, Anna. Thank you so much for sharing your key takeaways. And yes, it was very promising to hear about the different advancements in blue foods and marine value chains. When I was listening to the sessions, I was thinking, I'm never going to look at a plate of seafood the same way again. I just have so much more appreciation for it. And the spotlight session this afternoon hosted by one of our partners, World Fish, it gave new insights on how we can build resilient aquatic food systems. And we heard similar messages actually across the board, and especially from the coastal resilience track, that oceans and human health are strongly intertwined. You are right, actually, Anna, you know, the uh, ocean and the human health is closely related. One thing uh, probably also heard the mm. important term, 
natural basis solutions. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you also heard this type of the terminology many times from the uh, uh, COP26 uh, in the law school. Actually, the COP, uh, natural basis solutions are uh, not just uh, uh, important for the uh, climate change mitigation by expanding uh, natural carbon sink, uh, but also uh, natural basis solution very important to enhance the biodiversity uh, build the resilience, uh, provide the food and the water, and also help uh, clean air and sustain the natural resources. I'm very, very happy to hear Dr. Michael Bate uh, mm -hmm. today discuss about the opportunities of integrating the natural basis solutions to build the uh, coastal resilience for the, our communities in Asia and the Pacific. And I also heard uh, how these solutions can be applied in many environments, including mm -hmm. uh, wetlands and also the rivers and the coastal mm -hmm. uh, areas as well. Today, we also heard many challenges and also the barriers, of course. Uh, one of them, uh, of course, is growing plastic waste, which is, is very, very worrisome. Uh, again, you know, the Dr. Joanna uh, Jim. Uh, gave mm -hmm. us uh, some sobering uh, statistics of, uh, about the extent of the plastic pollution. That is uh, really harming our ocean health. We cannot believe that by the 2015, we already produce uh, about a cumulative the 8.3 being metric tons of the plastic, winning as much as uh, 80 million blue whales already. Anna, over Eight, to you. Yeah, 80 million blue whales is a lot of blue whales. I can't even imagine how many blue whales that is. But on the positive side, we also heard a lot of solutions, both emerging and existing, to tackle plastic pollution. I had the good fortune of moderating the session this morning called Circling Back, a back-to-back -back basics course, a back-to-basics course on circular economy, circular plastics economy. And it gave a very strong foundation of how we can tie economic and environmental outcomes together to overcome these issues in a sustainable and inclusive way. And we don't have to choose between the environment and the economy. You are right, actually, the, uh, and that is going to the heart of the ocean program. Circular economy, of course, is very critical for us to address the plastic waste. Uh, again, you know, we need to tie together economy, environment, community mm. for us to achieve the ocean uh, yep. uh, agenda. Again, finance for this type of integrated solution is very, very critical. Good thing is that we heard so many good news. Uh, one of the example is from the uh, uh, Margaret uh, uh, Kuro, uh, mm. our global finance practice leader from uh, WWF. She said the, uh, uh, the uh, blue economy is gaining interest from the financial institutions with the trillions of the US dollars expected being targeted on uh, ocean and coastal development over the next decade. Mm -hmm. So we also see uh, so many good examples in the decisions today. Of, of course, one of them is uh, our blue bonds, which we launched in the last year. You can see, uh, you can see, uh, you can uh, uh, take uh, the uh, more information from the video, our uh, IDB's uh, first uh, blue bond uh, insurance led last year. Over to you, Anna. Yeah, it's really exciting that ADB was able to raise $300 million through its first blue bond issuance. Thank you so much, Xingfeng, for sharing your thoughts and reflections about today. I am ending this day with a lot more hope than I started this morning, and I hope you are too. The future is looking bright for healthy oceans. And that takes us to the end of day one. We hope that you will all join us tomorrow for another day of learning and discussions. Bye for now and see you tomorrow. Thank you, Anna.